HRN listeners. As we celebrate our 15th year, we are deepening our commitment to giving voice to the next generation of food system storytellers, and we need your help. Our internship and fellowship programs help activate new possibilities for underrepresented and underestimated young people through experiential journalism, audio engineering, and production training. Through these unique programs, HRN helps food equity stewards build essential workforce readiness skills that expand their potential and foster economic mobility. Please consider supporting these critical programs. And with a minimum donation, you can be entered to win a dinner for two at an amazing restaurant in one of eight cities and tickets to a concert at a great venue in one of those cities. We have incredible partners across the country who have donated as they also share our passion for helping to educate the next generation of food system storytellers. Check out heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. That's heritageradionetwork.org 15 to donate and enter to win today. And make sure you donate before March 31st. Thank you. This is Elena Santigade from Cutting the Curd, and I'm here at Cheeselandia in Brooklyn. The all Wisconsin cheese, all the time, explosion of cheese event put on by the dairy farmers of Wisconsin. Um, it's wild. It's my first Cheeselandia. I'm very excited, and I'm here with Jillian Loyas and Lisa Griffin. And these two gals have been setting things up. Basically, you've been cutting the cheese all day, right? All day. And to it's say been, the least. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. So you two have been managing the crew of mongers that has prepared, I don't even know how much cheese I saw, but you might know. We how do. much would you estimate? Several hundred pounds. Yeah. yeah. We, have, we have a selection of at least, I'd say 80 plus cheeses. and All uh, Wisconsin cheese. All, all Wisconsin, Wisconsin cheese. Mm-hmm. And at least two or three wheels each. And the wheels go anywhere from 10 to 80 pounds. Um, we've got some, you know, classic Wisconsin block cheddar <laughs> that we'll be carving into some uh-huh. sort of Ooh, little artistry. Yes, it's going to be a probably more postmodern art looking, <laughs> a little I more like abstract, that. Yeah, abstract you know? cheese carving. I'm totally yeah. in. We're still on New York timing here. You know, mm-hmm. things are moving quick. But. Okay, what time did you two show up today to set up for this amazing? I've event? been here since nine, uh huh, and I got here at ten because. Um, Staten Island traffic was real (laughs) because (laughs) Staten Island is all you need to say. Um, And and how big was the crew that you had today? Um, It was Jillian and I have been here all day, and then we've had at least one or two other wonderful cheese ladies helping us out throughout the day at any given time. Cheese ladies, huh? It's been yeah. There was there's a total of four others plus us. So all we're all women in cheese, New York, Mm -hmm. which is. There's a lot of been a lot of magic going on up there. Love it. Witchy cheese magic. The and women uh, in cheese have <laughs> totally set up the Cheeselandia experience here tonight. Yes, and apparently in record time. So they've done some Cheeselandias before mm-hmm. in other cities around the country, but this is New York, and we're pretty competitive. You so, know how to prep. Yeah, so we busted that out and uh, <laughs> made sure we had enough time to now humble brag about it. And, with we, you. and we made sure it was beautiful and delicious. Indeed, indeed. <laughs> Tasting along the way, I'm sure. Of course. I mean, of course. Quality how control. Yep. Yeah. It's for very, the safety of everyone. <laughs> very important piece. Um, okay, so, you know, we're here at Brooklyn Winery, and there's not a lot of space. Were there any <laughs> moments where you thought, like, where are we going to put this next wheel of cheese? Yes, we had to get a little bit creative with storage and plating, but we managed to make it work. Um, yeah, while, I mean, the, the crew here, the staff of the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Winery mm-hmm. were so kind. We just took over every little nook and cranny in their mm-hmm. kitchen stealing their sharpies using their tape you know we and we have had platter upon platter as we started producing it you know these nice tidy wheels that you can stack on top of each other all of a sudden when it's you know right. beautiful triangles and squares and yeah, rectangles like, oh my yeah so we literally started stacking on every shelf next to the grains of rice and the the salt and pepper shakers and whatever we have 
we had platters of cheese hiding everywhere in the kitchen until we could finally bring it down to the grand display table. Amazing. But, um, and they were very patient with us using their freezers and their refrigerators as prep areas yeah. and trying to get things out and, then, and being patient with us, yeah. letting us finish. And it was yeah. very, it was yeah. a very um, patient and yeah. respectful. Yeah. yeah. Now team. you've you've each managed retail locations. You've done a lot of cheese work. Yes, we um, uh, Lisa, tell tell me a little bit about your background and what you're doing in cheese these days. Uh, I started in cheese at Murray's. Jillian actually trained me and taught me everything <laughs> uh-huh. I know. So we have cheese family here. We actually We're have yeah. three <laughs> generations of cheese yes. family. Yes, because j- jumping in on you. So and. I learned how to be a cheesemonger from Miss Elena, who's interviewing us right now. <laughs> so, full, little fun, incestuous cheese this circle is here. Yes. A true branch of the family tree. Yep, <laughs> absolutely. I love it. Mm. But from Murray's, you, you went on to lots, Lisa. From Murray's, then I went up to Lucy's Way and I um, managed the restaurant. Right, the cafe side. program. Mm-hmm. And, uh, very recently, I have given it up, but for the past few years, I've been running my own little cheese shop in Greenpoint called Monger's Palette. Yes, great yeah. spot. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and so I started with Elena, opening team for Beecher's New yes. York. Jillian, it feels like yesterday, oh although I won't even say how many years ago it was. Yeah, it was, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. I was a bit younger. <laughs> and I didn't even like blue cheese yet. Oh my gosh! <laughs> Unbelievable. She, but we got past that. Very we did quickly. get past that. Yeah, that's yeah. a blip in the history. <laughs> um, I love it a lot. I love it all now. Um, but started at Beecher's, uh, then eventually went to Murray's. Did a nice long run there, uh, including uh, being a part of the Kroger expansion project. Yeah, which moved me to Los Angeles, helping oversee the whole West Coast, wow. and then. Um, Eventually, I decided to move back home to where I grew up in New Jersey a couple years ago, and um, I've been doing graphic design and marketing and writing for cheese companies Mm -hmm. uh, for the last few years until just this week. Yeah, you've got a new project. I've got a new project, and I'm back in a lovely but little cheese shop in Red Bank, New Jersey called the Cheese Cave. Amazing. So I'm going to start uh, mongering there. Well, I've already started mongering there, and I'll be teaching classes again in no time. That's so exciting. It's I just fun couldn't to come stay away from the product. Right. Like, come full Forget circle. a computer screen. I need to eat it and <laughs> be with it and talk about it. And maybe drown in it. <laughs> yeah. Like today? We like did. today. We were <laughs> swimming. We <laughs> were swimming in cheese. Oh, yeah. My favorite part, though, I'd say, was um, we got... We were given huge, a huge vat of uh, Oaxaca string cheese. Mm-hmm. So it comes like, it looks like a million polios were just mushed together. Mm-hmm. And they were like, make this look nice. Put it on display. Oh my gosh. So we were playing around up there and eventually we ended up st- splitting them and just putting them into knots. So now there's like a beautiful heaping platter of Amazing. a million little like knots of string cheese that look like That's n- anything from a New York pretzel to a sailor's <laughs> knot. I mean, it was that was fun and I've never uh, I've never done that with string cheese before, yeah, but just tie knots I'm totally going to steal from myself and do it again. Yeah, <laughs> I'll say that. that. Like a good platter. It's fun. Trick. Who doesn't want to pick up a knot of cheese and just Yeah, you know, easy to eat. Have fun. Why not? <laughs> Um, so any other impressions from today or, you know, since, since this kind of cheese production is so different from your day to days, like, do you, like, does it, I don't know, what does it make you think of or how did it feel? It's so fun to get out of your comfort zone a little bit, but then like closer to the product. And so I'm curious. It was actually really surprisingly well organized. I know that some of these things are hard to pull together, but we were given lists of what we were supposed to pull and for what part of the event and Mm -hmm. it was pretty pretty easy to manage and you know yeah everybody is so lovely and friendly and helpful that's amazing it's a very good team everybody's willing to jump in and help too more lady power too like rachel and and all her girls from wisconsin i know there's some men around here too but i must say (laughs) it's it's been a predominantly uh female Female, strong yeah it's a very female-led operation um but it it really was it's been they've been so kind to us everyone has um and it's it's just been a lot of fun it feels 
I love events. You know, it feels different because we all know the party's coming. We're about to open the doors. Right, the so, energy is you like know, like half unique. the we spent half the time this morning hoping we were on time and right. you know at the right pace. <laughs> and then she'd start. Lisa would start doubting herself, and I'm like, "We got this. We're fine. We're good." And then I'd start kind of <laughs> like off to the side, like, "Are are we good? Do you think we're good?" <laughs> but we ended up finishing early. Yeah, yep. we're chat and cheese now, and then we're gonna actually ready to go sling yeah. some cheese yeah, right. for all of the guests. Yeah. Right. So you have a phase two of the this project yeah. once the party starts tell us a little bit about what you'll be doing Lisa you want to so we'll be running a little kind of cheese counter so that the guests can come and on their way out um, use cheese bucks to come and buy you know all, some of the great cheeses they love the most and take them home and enjoy them after the event yeah. amazing yeah when so, guests arrive they get a little booklet I think that has a little coupon basically for that yeah. piece of cheese they can take with them amazing yeah and then they walk up to us at the fake cheese shop and it's very real it's full it's of all a, real yeah, there's cheese. a real cheese case it's down there real, it's real, huge yeah it's bigger so they, than the cheese yeah. case that's in my shop so, <laughs> on, so on their way out they get to walk up to us and we're gonna be chopping and wrapping half pound big old pieces of cheese and just like, you know, at, at a Thanksgiving speed yeah. <laughs> for, for mongers. A very busy time of year for yes. you non-cheese listeners. Wrapping cheese at Thanksgiving speed is its, ho- its own skill. Yes. But we'll, we'll be ready. We're bringing our A game. We wow. just had some pizza. Yeah. I think more coffee's in order. Okay. Okay. More coffee, more water. But yeah. And then you'll be ready. A little ready stretching. To, Good yeah. to go. We're going to keep cutting that cheese. Yep. <laughs> Till the cows keep on, come keeping home. on. All right. Well, I'll see you there. Can't right. wait. Thank you. This is Elena Santigate, and I'm here at Cheeselandia, Brooklyn. We're at the Brooklyn Winery, and I'm really excited to be speaking with Lauren from Schumann Cheese in Wisconsin. Lauren. Welcome to Brooklyn. Thanks. It's not that nice outside, but Brooklyn's still amazing weather. It's sunny, gray, so (laughs) I'm excited to be here. That's awesome. So tell us what you do for Schumann Cheese. Um, I am the B2B and corporate communications manager at Schumann Cheese. So you basically get to talk cheese, all cheese all the time with other companies and... Do you, I guess, events like this? Yes. Um, mm-hmm. So I work very closely with the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin, and mm-hmm. they are awesome. They put on events like this, and so I um, work with them to put our cheeses in there and to talk cheese and pretty much just get the word out there about what we have to offer, and they really help a lot with that type of education. So tell us a little bit about Schumann, um, the, the company, the cheeses. Yeah. Where to begin? Um, so Schumann's super awesome because it's a fourth generation company. Um, they've mm-hmm. been doing this for almost 75 years now. And it's super cool because the fourth generation works there as well as the third generation. Wow. So they are like, they know cheese. Yeah. And they love it. That's sort of where the story originated. So they started as importers and mm-hmm. um, sort of branched out from there, just seeing different opportunities and seizing different partnerships just mm. across the world. And then also... Um, we make cheese domestically, obviously, in Wisconsin, because, you know, where else? Um, <laughs> and so it's pretty cool because we have a neat portfolio of, yeah. um, like I said, opportunities. So we have feta from Greece, and then we have manchego from Spain, and then mm. we have, like, our copper kettle cheese from Wisconsin. So right. they love it. And how many cheeses are made in Wisconsin? Um, so our cello line and our yellow door creamery line, um, are both made in Wisconsin and Mm -hmm. my boss is going to kill me because I don't know how many SKUs are in each. You know what? I'm going to just say, I know those lines of cheese and there are a lot different cheeses. So (laughs) nobody is going to blame you for not being able to rattle off the name of the SKUs there. More than three, less than a (laughs) hundred. (laughs) <laughs> I love that range. <laughs> now, style-wise, I know that you do a Parmesan style. You do um, I, the yellow door cheeses I'm, I'm not as familiar with. But tell us a little bit about the style of cheeses that you're making in Wisconsin. Sure. So um, the cello line is mostly made like they make the cheeses in Italy. So we have Asiago, mm-hmm. Fontal. Um, the copper kettle cheese is actually made in a copper kettle. So it's a Parmesan, uh-huh. but it has a little bit more of a caramel flavor and a cool hue to it. Okay. And then um, the yellow door line is Rub Fontinas and then um, Alpine style cheeses. Neat. Wow, that's great. Yeah. 
Have you been to Cheeselandia before? No, that's this is why your first yeah. one. Yeah, that's why I'm so excited. Whenever they were like, "Oh, we're coming to Brooklyn," I was like, "Um, that's super close to where I am. I'm 100 percent in." <laughs> so you were already on the road nearby. <laughs> yes. So our headquarters are in Fairfield, New Jersey. Ah, okay. So I went to work this morning, had my yogurt and cheese, and then I came here to talk more cheese. <laughs> that's awesome. So, uh, what are you expecting out of Cheeselandia today? Well, they have. I know that this sounds like super, I'm like elder millennial, so I know this sounds like (laughs) it, but like there's so many fun things to take pictures of. Yeah, it's so true. That's what I'm really excited about. Have you heard about the bathrooms? I I was just in there. They are amazing. The mirror says like, you've never looked cheddar. Like it's, they're, they always do, they're super creative. And so I'm looking forward to trying some different cheeses that I may not have tried Mm -hmm. before. Um, and just seeing the spread and they always have such cool activities and the vibe is just neat because yeah. it's just people who are super excited about cheese. Yeah. We're all here for the love of cheese. Yes. Yes. For the love of Wisconsin cheese. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Awesome. Well, thanks for chatting with us. Today. Yeah. Thanks for having me. This is Elena Santagate, and I'm here at Cheeselandia, Brooklyn. I'm with Sue Fanning of the Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin and Gino Church of Brains on Fire Creative Agency, working with Dairy Farmers of Wisconsin. Um, Welcome to Brooklyn, you two. We are so excited to be here. What a beautiful place. Yeah. (laughs) Well, beautiful and Wisconsin cheese filled, at least in the space we're in right now. Absolutely. That was the goal, to bring a little wedge of Wisconsin wonderful to the fine folks in Brooklyn. It's unbelievable. This is my first Cheeselandia. And so I think the first question I have for both of you is just, how do you start to conceptualize what this is going to look like, feel like? Like, where do you even begin when you're thinking about setting up a new Cheeselandia in a brand new city in a brand new space? Well, I mean, definitely the centerpiece is going to be the cheese because Mm. the cheeses are so incredibly beautiful. So you see those cheeses in there that have the double annatto, the ones that have the blue veining, the ones that have the beautiful rinds. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are just so many gorgeous cheeses. Like, that's where we start. We definitely want to let cheese take center stage. Um, And then the other things are really to help build the story around the mystique of Wisconsin cheese. Mm -hmm. Totally. Geez, I have no, I have no idea how to follow that. I think, <laughs> you know, the thing about kind of a dream for Sue and I. Sue and I go back. We've known each other for a long time. Actually, three other clients. Mm-hmm. And um, you know, the beautiful thing about working with Sue as a, a creative agency is that she understands and believes in adding value to the people that love the mm. brand. In this case, love cheese and. It was just great that she called us and said, I'm working for dairy farmers. People love our cheese. Let's find them. Let's mm-hmm. go where they are. And a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. So that's why we're here in Brooklyn. That's awesome. Is for that. You know, the thing that I notice about the, I mean, again, this is my first Cheeselandia. So I'm about to experience it for the very first time. But the things I notice about the other sort of, events and the projects that the dairy farmers of Wisconsin are doing for the cheesemakers of Wisconsin are, they're very interactive. It's like you don't just, you know, take in a two-dimensional story about Wisconsin cheese. And I feel like there are some touches that I already got a little little uh, sneak peek about for tonight's event um, that, that involve a little more than just kind of mingling around and tasting cheese. Can you tell us about a little, a few of those? That's absolutely true, and thank you so much for noticing. I would say, you know, first of all, cheese is having a renaissance, and we don't have to tell you or any of the listeners that. People are interested in cheese. I mean, it's making a comeback in a huge way for so many different reasons. And for us in Wisconsin, uh, we're a very humble crew, and we haven't spent a lot of time really telling our stories and shouting the the praises of Wisconsin cheeses. Um, In reality, Wisconsin makes about half of the specialty, all of the specialty cheese in the entire country. It's amazing. We win um, more awards than any other state or country. We are the only state that requires a license to make cheese. We're the only state outside, well, actually, we're the only place anywhere outside of Europe where you can uh, become a master cheesemaker. Right. So there are so many things that make Wisconsin different. And our goal with all of our marketing and everything that we're doing 
is just not to blare out those messages because right. that's the which I just did, but you know what I mean. <laughs> so, but that's not what we want to do. What we want to do is hold events like this. Mm -hmm. um, we want to connect with cheese lovers all over the country. We want to understand what makes them love cheese, and we want to empower them. We want to equip them. We want to kind of bring them into the Wisconsin fold, right. and um, in the hopes that they will start talking about us and drive word of mouth and build a community. So we want to make a real connection, and that's what we're trying to do with all of our marketing efforts. Yeah, I think you're, you hit on, I think what makes this special is that everything is about the people that mm -hmm. come here. Right. So it truly is a human-centric um, purpose in terms of the strategy. And the same thing kind of goes with Cheeselandia and what Sue hit on. For me, I'm from South Carolina. I'm as far away from Wisconsin as you can just about <laughs> I get. I hadn't noticed. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Back is strong with sorry, accent. sorry. <laughs> as I would say, sorry, y'all. Um, so, um, but the other the other thing about it is that as we started to go out, Sue and her team took us out to meet like Sid Cook at Car Valley mm -hmm. and um, and Chris Raleigh, and mm -hmm. you can't help but fall in love with the men and women that make this cheese yeah. and how humble they are. And Sue said we want to create a humble, nurturing, human-centric experience. And I think that comes out of the values of Wisconsin and mm -hmm. Wisconsin cheese. And I think then it goes back again is that we as human beings have this really interesting relationship with cheese. Mm. It might be the first food that you really hold as a child. Yeah. I mean, you. Yeah, I, for me, I remember the grilled cheese sandwiches my grandmother made. Right. Or being able to eat a piece of cheese call, carved off of a block yeah. and we've heard that over and over through people and I think it gives us a chance to get people to slow down you hear people laughing have a good time right. get off their phones forget right. about technology um, we do want them to Instagram and tweet and share this but right. we really want them to connect with other people and connect with the cheese mm -hmm. so and I saw there's a little there's a whole setup for a tasting event that'll happen like a guided yeah. Uh, little portion of the evening. We do. We have a few things going on. So mm -hmm. one of them, of course, is like a guided pairing session that's mm -hmm. happening. So uh, a lot of classes. And then we also have like a really fun Instagram station that has all kinds of colorful foods and beautiful cheeses. So people can create it. We have special lights so they can take pictures of their artwork, right? Because food awesome. is art and certainly cheese mm -hmm. is art. Cheese is the best excuse to play with your food. You know, you could be making your cheese board, but really it's just the ultimate socially acceptable playing with your food you can do as a grown-up in my opinion that's, that's interesting true. you're, you're <laughs> right i haven't thought about that but you can my daughter it. always says the phone eats first <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's cool a great great slogan for a child of a marketer i love it <laughs> all that's right true. so what are your big um what what how do you consider cheeselandia a success Jeez. Well, you know, let's kind of go into a little bit more of what Cheeselandia is. Yeah. Because this yeah. particular event is Cheeselandia. This is one of our pop-up right. events. We're doing this all over the country so that people all over can have a little a little taste oh. of Wisconsin Wonderful, like we yep. said. Um, but really, Cheeselandia is a community. And it's a right. community for cheese lovers. Um, and it's all powered by Wisconsin cheese. Mm -hmm. So another huge component of this program is that we looked for ultimate cheese lovers all over over the country and um, we had people raise their hands and we gave them cheese to have cheese parties. So it's again, amazing. We, we powered yeah. these parties. We didn't pay people anything. We just gave them cheese right. and we gave them instructions on how to have like an incredible party. Um, these people are just going above and beyond. They are surprising and delighting us every day. They are carving signs out of wood with the Cheeselandia community logo on it. The um, photos on social media uh, are unbelievable. Yeah, unbelievable. Cool. What's the hashtag? Is it Cheeselandia or how, how can people find... Cheeselandia community photos on Instagram and Facebook. So you can look at hashtag Cheeselandia. Mm -hmm. You can look at hashtag Wisconsin Cheese. Mm -hmm. You can also go to at visit Cheeselandia because Got that's it. the handle that we have. Right. And you can go to Cheeselandia.com. So lots of ways to kind of, uh, awesome. you know, platforms yep. are fluid these days, right? Right. So, you can um, travel there however you choose to get there. That's yeah. absolutely right. 
Um, but the, yeah, like you said, the parties though are just amazing, mm. and the people are incredible, and the spreads that they are doing, and the things that they are saying. I mean, these consumers are doing marketing better than we ever could. Right. I'll tell you. So there's definitely it's driving some some word of mouth, and it's um it's beautiful and it's authentic, and it's just what we want in Wisconsin. Right. I think Sue, didn't we have one party? We've had a couple that are have been huge, like fifty people. Wow. Like just crazy party numbers. But the, the party idea actually, I mean, parties have been around forever. But when we were talking to cheesemakers, we asked them what they hoped people would do when they ate their cheese. Hmm. And they said they hoped they would share it with their friends. So there you go. And Have that's, a cheese party. That's what this is. Yeah. That's, at the heart of it, that's really what cheese is all about. It brings yeah. people together and creates new memories that, you know, live on. It's a really, it's almost like a proper way to talk and eat at the same time because far too often it's like don't eat with food in your mouth but with cheese it's like yeah we, we get a pass we definitely believe that wisconsin cheese makes the world a happier tastier place and that's all we want to do i'm all for that yeah absolutely so well thank you so much for chatting with me today thank you. sounds like the party's really taking off down there so we we gotta get down there that's awesome thanks so much for having us thank you Welcome back to Heritage Radio Network on Tour. I am Katie Mosman-Wadler, and today we are broadcasting from Cheeselandia, which for one night only is located in Brooklyn, New York. We are at City Winery, and I'm very excited right now to welcome Lauren Mosness to the show. Welcome, Lauren. Hello. Lauren, we just found out that we're neighbors, actually. Um, so you are buying cheese now for Alphabet City ABC Beer, Beer Company yep. on Avenue C, just down the street from me. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background. Um, how did you come to have that incredibly kick-ass job? Well, I started working in cheese in Montana, and then I moved to New York, moved back to New York City um, in 2017. I worked for Saxelby Cheesemongers for two years, and then I just started this job in February, and it's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Yeah. Are you thinking a lot these days about cheese and beer pairings then? I am thinking a lot about cheese and beer pairings. We have such a heavy rotating tap list that it's really fun to also have a heavy rotation of cheeses to go with the beers we keep on tap. Cool. Uh, any favorite pairings or surprising pairings that you have discovered lately? Um, right now we have a six-point beer, um, a beer de champagne. It's called Chump Change, and it's like pretty heavy in the raspberry, and I think it goes awesome with Kunick. Yum. Not a surprising pairing, but a baller one for sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we're here, obviously, at Cheeselandia, uh, mostly to eat a lot of cheese. Have you been to Cheeselandia before? No, this is my first Cheeselandia event. Uh, I went to Wisconsin in October. No Cheeselandia had happened yet, just a lot of Cheeselandia talk. Okay. So I was super excited to get the invite to this. So there's been a lot of build-up and yeah, anticipation. And, uh, yeah, we're about to open the doors, and you're going to see the full full on cheeselandia um in the meantime though you had a pretty cool circumstance lead to you getting to go to wisconsin so you did an awesome job at cmi tell our listeners if they're not total cheese nerds what is cmi uh cheesemonger invitational just a really fun amazing experience more learning than competing but it's just an opportunity to meet a lot of cheesemakers test out your cheese skills and also like a huge community connector because it's such a tiny little cheese world out there. And I just love, I love our little cheese world. Um, and yeah, you just kind of compete. I'm not really sure how I got scored on what I got scored, but I was super excited to win the trip to Wisconsin. And what did you have to do in the competition? Um, best practices, cutting, selling cheese, like, like, a, like a mock selling of cheese. Mm -hmm. um, a written test, an aroma test, some. What and, and I've actually never been to CMI, but I've heard oh. I have heard things. Uh, what's the vibe? If, Fun. I, if, I, if I walk into CMI off the street, what what am I expecting? It's intense. It's heavy. It's like you know, like we're there. We're dedicated. We're learning about cheese. One day we tried 
I don't know, 30 different cheeses, and then they fed us pizza for dinner. Like, we were really ingesting copious amounts of cheese and talking about cheese, and it was three days of awesome cheese action. <laughs> so you won a trip to Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. What did you do? We, did you eat cheese in Oh, Wisconsin? my God. <laughs> so we went to LeClaire. We went to um, a place that makes... I mean, we went to so many. We went to Pleasant Ridge. It was so long ago, I can't remember everywhere we went. Um, Pleasant Ridge Reserve. Where else did we go? We met a ton of cheesemakers. And I was familiar with some of them from working at Saxelby's. And then some of them were really new to me. Um, But it was just... Everyone was so nice and so lovely. And it was such a wonderful experience. I met some really awesome cheesemongers that also won which was super fun. And we just had like a good time like busting around the whole state of Wisconsin talking to cheesemakers. Some of us milked cattle. I was going to ask if you got to meet some cows. We did. This there was a highlight for like me. there were like some of some of us um like jumped right in when we were at a, like on a parlor room floor and just started milking away. Like we saw all of Had you milked a cow before? I'm from Montana, so I've milked quite a few cows. Okay. Um more so not in a dairy sense but in a steak sense so yeah it was it was a really fun time and just really fun to hang out with everyone and just talk about cheese all the time tons of swag (laughs) which I just didn't ever see coming and yeah just bonding with other cheesemongers which was really fun does Wisconsin look like the pictures yeah it's like living in a postcard I'm I'm picturing like Rolling green hills covered in cows and blue cloudless skies. They talk about the the landscape a lot because they talk about the terroir mm-hmm. of what the cows are eating and different parts of Wisconsin. Um, and it definitely is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful country. And we were there in October, so it was like epically beautiful. This might be an unfair question to ask a cheesemonger. Do you have a favorite Wisconsin cheese? I do. I would have to say... I'd have to say Pleasant Ridge Reserve. I, Ooh, that was really I, hard. That was, I was really hard. Predict that actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a, that's a top choice around our office. As I well. love that they just focus on two cheeses and two cheeses alone, and their extreme dedication to their cattle and their land. They do an amazing job. Awesome. I love it, and I've been there. I've been to that dairy twice, so hopefully, I'll get to say I've been there a third time. Very cool. Um, well, I don't want to keep you from eating any of this cheese, so I want to say get my cheese huge on. thank you for coming on to Heritage Radio Network here, Radio Live from Cheeselandia, Brooklyn. Let's eat some cheese. Thank you. Let's eat some cheese. <laughs> Welcome back to Heritage Radio Network on Tour. I am Katie Mosman-Wadler, and today we are broadcasting live from Cheeselandia, which is a celebration of Wisconsin cheese here tonight in Brooklyn, one night only. And I'm very excited right now to be joined by Marissa Mullen. She is the force behind the Instagram account, That Cheese Plate. Welcome, Marissa. Hello. Thank you for having me. So tell us about your Instagram. Um, How did this become a thing for you? What's your background that led you along this path? Yeah, um, well, so I started the Instagram in college um, six years ago, and it was a way for me to post cheese plate pictures that I would, I'd make cheese plates with friends, we'd have wine and cheese parties, and I want a place to kind of document my photos and create a centralized location for cheese plate inspiration. Um, growing up, my dad is a chef, and I would always be around cheese 24-7. Whenever my parents would entertain, I would be on cheese plate duty. And that's kind of how I got my start with trying new cheeses and figuring out ways to pair them and to put them on a plate. Um, and my background actually is in music industry. Um, I worked at The Late Show Stephen Colbert for the past four years and um, led creative for John Batiste, the band leader on the show. So it was a lot of um, aesthetics kind of is the fuel for what I do. Um, I've done a lot of photography, videography, and I pretty much applied all of that experience to these cheese plates that I create um, to make these kind of vibrant, colorful, abundant creations. And over time, um, I just put a lot of energy into it and created this brand around it. Um, 
I, I almost treated it like the Instagram was the artist and I was its manager, <laughs> kind of translating it to the music industry in a way. Um, so I would do collaborations with other Instagrams and um, I started making connections with other cheese companies and cheesemongers around and over the six years just picked up a lot of uh, tips and just kind of honed in on my craft. Um, as I kept making more and more boards, they became more and more intricate. Um, and then I realized that every time I made a cheese plate, I would use the same order of operations every time, uh, which is something I later coined cheese by numbers. And essentially, it's just a step by step on how to make a cheese plate. So step one is cheese, step two is meat, step three is produce, step four is crunchy items, step five is dips, and step six is garnish. So if you do that every time in order, you make the perfect cheese plate. Um, so I created another Instagram account for that called Cheese by Numbers uh -huh. a year ago. And that kind of just grew like wildfire. And uh, it was crazy because I, for that cheese plate, it took about six years to get to where I am now, which is just under 100K, hoping to hit Incredible. that. Incredible. I know, I saw 99. And 99K. I'm, yeah, we, we're, we got to get the word out so yeah. we can just oot you <laughs> over to that extra digit. Yes. And uh, so that took six years to get to that point, just because, you know, I... I would sit in class in college six years ago and like hashtag brie, hashtag cheese, hashtag cheese plate, and just like all the photos in the hashtag. Um, I would tell every single person I knew about my Instagram. Um, I was kind of like a street team leader for myself, you uh -huh. know, just getting the word out. And with Cheese by Numbers, um, I think the concept just connected with so many people because it was a way to break down this uh, intimidating looking cheese plate with easy steps. Um, and it it really connected and people would tag me in photos of cheese plates they made. And, um, that one, uh, blew up. I got asked to be on the Rachel Ray show and then the today show. And then I got a book deal and then I quit my job. And so I've been doing this full time for two months <laughs> and the rest is history. And the rest is history. Sorry. What's that was a very long explanation. <laughs> uh, the title is that cheese plate will change your life. Um, which it obviously has changed my life. So that's, that's kind of the, the reason why I've called that. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it will change your life too, because essentially it is um, 60 cheese by numbers maps. And throughout, it's kind of tips on how cheese plates are a form of self-care and wellness. So for me, while I was working in the music industry, when I had days off, which was pretty rare, I would make cheese plates as like my therapeutic meditation almost. Mm -hmm. I would go shopping, buy ingredients, spend time cutting vegetables and folding meat. And uh, when you actually take the time to slow down and actually cut vegetables and fold meat and place the cheese, it really does force you to be present. Um, and this kind of concept was my guiding force with just spreading this, I don't know, cheese plate inspiration. Like, And I'd invite friends over and it'd be a sharing experience. And... I feel like cheese plates really connect all the senses. So with this book, it kind of goes through each step. So it goes into step one in depth, step two in depth, which is cheese, meat, produce, so on. Um, but then throughout, it's like cutting cheese with intention and, you know, the art of the salami river, which is the salami flowing down the center of the plate. Yeah, I, I pulled out a few terms from looking at your Instagram yeah. and then there's a lot of landscape language there in there. Is, you yeah. have salami rivers, you have produce ponds. Produce ponds, yeah. Are, so here, this might be a stretch, but when you're putting together your ingredients for a cheese plate and you're thinking about terroir and you're thinking about what's going to go together, does the landscape of the cheese plate ever play into kind of the landscape of the terroir of what you're putting on the plate? I feel like it definitely does, um, especially with, you know, seasons and seasonal produce. And uh, I love going to the farmer's market and seeing what's what's in store there. But especially with the cheeses, if I'm using something that is a little bit more like you know, like a brie that has like that earthy texture to it, kind of like mushroomy. Um, I love to pair that with like, I don't know, it's like that's almost the the dirt in the soil. And then the salami river is almost kind of going through that as a as a stream. And a then, nice refreshing stream yeah. of salami. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, with specific pairings, it's almost like uh, less of what the ingredients on the plate are but more of how you place them mm -hmm. that's kind of more how I visualize the the landscape terms you know so produce pond came to be because I was creating a cheese plate and uh step three is produce so I was putting little piles of produce all over the plate and I was saying to myself oh it's a little produce pile but then pile doesn't really reflect landscape but pond does it doesn't have the <laughs> same ring to it, it doesn't have the same like <laughs> therapeutic meditative yeah, pond yeah. you know pile isn't quite like that 
Um, so yeah, I think it's just an easy way for people to kind of visualize how a cheese plate looks, you know, with, with the salami river. It's like, mm -hmm. oh yeah, I know what a river looks like. Let's do it with salami. And it's a good way to separate the items on the plate. So usually I'll do like fruits on one side of the salami river, vegetables on the other side. Or if I'm trying to do a specific color scheme, do those color blockings on one side and other colors on the other. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's very visual. I'm picturing like a Lord of the Rings <laughs> yeah. uh, like <laughs> map um, kind of situation for, of, of like what's kind of underpinning yeah. the geography here. Yeah, um, that's a good idea here, for a future plate. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We are um, here celebrating Wisconsin cheese. Yes. And so I, of course, want to ask you if there are any cheeses from Wisconsin that are regulars for you on your cheese plates and how you think about pairing those. Yeah. Um, well, I love Pleasant Ridge Reserve. Um, it's a great cheese. I feel like it's such a reliable cheese because it does pair with so many things. It has that slight, you know, well, the texture, it's really nice to cut into nice triangle shapes, you know, mm -hmm. so you can do a lot with that. But it has this uh, sharpness to it that pairs really well with kind of a sweet jam or a chutney. Um, it also, it reminds me almost like a Gruyere where it goes with a lot of different, like it can go with something salty to complement the two salty elements, but it can also go with something really sweet. It could also go with something like a fruit that's not so sweet, but just like teeters on the edge. Um, so I love Rush Creek Reserve. I also, oh sorry, Pleasant Ridge Reserve, but also Rush Creek Reserve, which is only available a few times, few times a year. Um, that's a really special cheese. It's super gooey and decadent and oh, I want to come back. <laughs> So not counting shopping, how long does it take for one of your cheese plates to come together? Are we counting prep time too, like cutting things? Yeah, let's count, let's count like you get home from the grocery like store grocery or bags your and cheesemonger hands. and you are ready to plate. Let's, we're, we're not going to count cheese warming up time, but okay. like from all, all the steps of washing produce, assembly, cutting, everything. Okay. So we're not counting cheese warming up? No. Cheese is room temp. Cheese is, yeah, you, okay. you've gotten home, you've rested your cheese, it's ready to go. Time to cut. Time to cut. Um, I would say start to finish, depending on how big the board is. Um, the ones that I post on my Instagram, the largest board I have is about 15 inches wide. So for something like that, I would say probably about like an hour or so. Um, but that's mostly just prepping the vegetables and prepping okay. the meat um, because... Once, once everything is pre-cut and kind of assembled in the order that I do it in, I can arrange it in about 10 minutes or less, usually. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, so if you got your mise en place and then it's kind of a breeze. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, once you just follow the step by step, it pretty much goes in order and yeah. flows nicely. Yeah. And if you're having people over, are you having them over for a cheese plate or are you cooking or are they bringing things and how, what does that look like? Is it cheese plate for dinner? Yes, it is absolutely cheese plate for dinner. Um, I have this group text called the cheese party and it is a group text with like eight of my closest friends. And every time I'm making a cheese plate for a post or for my book and I have a ton of cheese left over, I text the group and say cheese party tonight. And this started out being a really calm, casual gathering of about eight people. We would, I'd make a few cheese plates. We'd sit around, catch up, drink wine. This has turned into a cheese rager because everyone has started to bring their friends. Uh -huh. um, the last cheese party, I think there were about 40 people in my tiny Brooklyn apartment. Casual. And I made about five cheese plates. Wow. And everything <laughs> gets destroyed. Even like the rosemary sprigs are destroyed after. I'm like, okay, what, guys. What are they doing the with the rosemary? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> garnish is for looks, okay? Um, <laughs> So yeah, typically my parties tend to be cheese plates for dinner. Um, and then whenever a friend makes dinner, I'll always bring a little plate over. Because now it's at that point where if I show up without a cheese plate, people are like, what are you doing? I mean, you're not going to like bring a casserole at this yeah, point, no. right? They're going to be like, what are plate. you doing? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think they're counting on you. Um, well, thank you. Thank you for being there for us. And uh, I don't want to keep you from eating off of the enormous cheese plate oh, that so is in the other room. Yes. So, Marissa, thank you so much for sitting down with HRN. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Yeah, thanks for having me.